back to the Ed Show, and thanks for staying up tonight. Scott Walker's budget repair bill contains 10 short lines that highlight the Republican strategy for selling out America and help explain why Scott Walker is quick to take any calls from David Koch. Well, if passed, the bill allows Governor Walker to, quote, sell any state, and now this is in the bill, sell any state-owned heating, cooling, and power plant or may contract with a private entity for the operation of any such plant with or without solicitation of bids or, uh, or for any amount that the department determines to be in the best interest of the state. Now, hold it there. He can also lay off workers at the plants before the sale, make it look good. Wisconsin Republicans have been trying to do this for years. The same plan was in the budget for 2005 through 2007. It was vetoed by Democratic Governor Jim Doyle, who said the plan was, quote, not a good business approach. You see, most governors would want to get as much money as possible by making companies you know, bid against one another to get the price up, but not Scott Walker. Apparently, taxpayers don't need to know who's getting their money. Now, you may be wondering, uh, who would be in a position to buy these power plants from Governor Walker? Well, Coke Industries already has three major utility operations in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, these 34 state-run plants would give them an energy monopoly. Does that bother you? Now, through a spokesman, the Koch Industries have denied interest in the plants, but remember, Koch Brothers gave Scott Walker $43,000 for his campaign, plus another million dollars to the Republican Governors Association, which in turn spent millions of dollars attacking Walker's opponent. Now, since the bill allows the sale to happen at Walker's whim, uh, we won't know if he does a favor for the Kochs until the money changes hands. Joining me tonight is Thomas Frank, a columnist for Harper's Magazine and author of The Wrecking Crew, How Conservatives Ruined Government, Enriched Themselves, and Begged the Nation. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, you wrote about this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where have you heard this song before, Ed? Uh, well, uh, you have to be uh, fulfilled that it's now playing out in real live color, aren't you? You know, <laughs> this is not something that I'm happy to be prescient about. I mean, this is a this is a dreadful, dreadful thing that's happening up there in Wisconsin. Nobody's you're never happy to see something like this. But yeah, um, yeah, I did write about it a couple years ago. OK, so why would the state legislature grant a governor this kind of power? Well, look, this is what they do. This is this is this is how conservatives rule, as a, you know, as I put it in the book. This is what the Bush administration did. The same kind of things all over the country. But basically, what you're seeing going on up there. I mean, you've got basically three steps in the three stages in in, in the program, right? On the one hand, you get rid of the uh, you 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 get rid of the of the government workers, and you you privatize, you outsource everything, and then you know you. Um, Oh hell, you you know you deunionize. You know you do do a great favor for your friends in the private sector. But there's a, there is a cosmic historical appropriateness to this to this great prank that's been played on the governor of Wisconsin that I want to point out to you. And sure. go back to to what John Nichols was saying a minute ago. Wisconsin, which is sort of the birthplace of all these clean government initiatives. You know, a hundred years ago, Bob La Follette, whom whom he mentioned. You know why they did things like uh, build a, a professional you know a professional public servants and, 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 and this sort of thing, why they have, why we have a bureaucracy in the first place, it's because before we did things that way, government, state governments used to be dominated by big private companies, uh, you know, the sort of 19th century equivalent of the Koch brothers. I'm from Kansas. It was a railroad that dominated the government in Kansas. And it was easy to buy and sell entire, you know, the entire state legislature. You know, in some states it was railroads, in some states timber industry, the timber industry, in other states oil, you know, whatever it is. So you had, and they were able to basically get their guys in as U.S. Senator, whatever you want. And we said no to that system 100 years ago, and we replaced it with a professional civil service. And it's, it's just so, whether it's irony or, or some kind of, you know, something, you know, more cosmic than that, that this guy is trying to wreck the civil service and takes a phone call from whom he thinks is his buddy, David Koch, you know. It's <laughs> well, this is proof positive that the Republicans think that no government is good government. And they're on record saying that the uh, state well, government. I would, I would say lousy government. There's a famous saying that I that I write about a lot in the Wrecking Crew. I dug it up from the. It was famous in the 1920s, which is the the best public servant is the worst one. 
okay? This is something that they used to say back then. The best public servant is the worst one. You only want lousy people in government because if government is good, you know, if government delivers good service and people will start to trust it and it'll be a, it'll compete with private industry and blah, 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 can't have that. You gotta have, you know, you gotta wreck the uh, civil service and that's what they're doing. You think this governor, do you think he's gonna succeed? I mean, I, I, mean, I think tonight the, this tape that's been revealed uh, he's lost a lot of credibility with a lot of people, uh, and I, I think that this is a game changer. Your thoughts on it? I love pranks. I love uh, I love it when. Uh, but this when, goes beyond it, a prank, does, doesn't yeah, it? Tell it oh, us? oh, of course, it's all the best ones do. It's it's yeah. it's colossal. I mean, it's it's uh, you know it, it just it goes right through the surface. You know everything that the guy was saying about the budget. You know no, it, it, that's not what it was about. It's been about you know exactly. destroying the power of, of of people to negotiate with their bosses all along. That's what he's after. He sees himself as a Ronald Reagan kind of figure. I guess he's going up against the commies, which would be you know us or something. You you heard all. <laughs> the stuff that exactly. The, the Soviet Union. But I, I guess I didn't think that they'd be so dumb enough to play it out in living color the way they're doing it right now. They, they are definitely bold. There's no doubt. Look at the, they, look. Lots of people have lost their jobs for a lot less. No you doubt. think about poor Shirley Sherrod. Okay. You know this. This is uh, of course it's a game changer. Yeah. Thomas Frank, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Appreciate Anytime, it. Anytime, Ed. This is.